Hello, my name is Beck, and welcome to a reading wrap up for the months of May and June. I'm going to be talking about the books that I've recently finished. But before I dive into those, I just wanted to quickly mention three books that I ended up finishing in April for the Owls Readathon, and I never actually discussed them in my wrap up earlier, so I thought I'd just throw them into this wrap up and quickly glaze over them so that I can start talking about the books that I've read more recently. So firstly I just wanted to talk about a graphic novel called Honor Girl and I've actually forgotten the author and I ended up unhauling this book unfortunately. I can't remember which of the prompts I read this one for but I gave it about a 3 out of 5 stars. It was a graphic memoir detailing the life of the main character who went to a summer camp and it was a very religious summer camp and she finds out that she's gay on this summer camp and I thought it would explore that in a lot more detail and a lot more nuance but it just seemed to kind Kind of glaze over things and I had a lot of expectations going into the story but then when the story wrapped up it kind of fizzled for me and unfortunately I didn't really enjoy it that much so I ended up giving it three out of five stars. I'm gonna donate it to a local salvos or something and someone else hopefully can like it a little bit more than I did because I'm just glad that I ended up finishing it and getting it off my to be read pile really. Next up I've got two audiobooks that I listened to for the Owls Readathon and the first one is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel and this is an adult dystopian book. I thought this would dive a lot more into the survival aspects of a dystopian and more of the brutality of it but we kind of follow a traveling troupe, not a circus but they put music on in the different towns to kind of give people hope and they come across a lot of small cult-like towns and they also run into a few characters that we see the present day of and the before the apocalypse happened so it's really interesting to see both sides of it and how communities are formed based on where people ended up. If I tell you what the characters did and how they felt it kind of gives pieces of the story away and I don't want to really reveal anything but I did like it. It was about a four star read for me out of five. I feel like if I reread it I would like it a lot more because when I was reading it I was anticipating that it would get really fast paced and it wasn't that kind of story so when I go back eventually and revisit it I'm going to probably enjoy it a lot more for what it is which is more of a meditation on the human mind and how we can kind of relate to people and form communities and how we survive together. And then the last book that I want to talk about from my Owls Readathon that I just conveniently forgot about was Sadie by Courtney Summers. And this one I listened to on audiobook as well and I liked it on audiobook because it mixed its elements of a podcast with the main character's narration. So we get to see both sides of what's going on. It's kind of a mystery thriller about this girl named Sadie and her sister gets murdered and she kind of knows or has an inkling about who the murderer is so she goes off to try and track him down. And while she's doing this we end up following a true crime podcast and that true crime podcast podcast is chronicling Sadie's life as to where she ends up in the story. So for example if she's going through a truck stop in her narration we end up seeing really what happened and then in the next chapter it might be the true crime podcast and they're talking about Sadie when she went through the truck stop. So the podcast is a few steps behind Sadie's actual narration which is what I found really interesting and I think if I read this one physically I would have probably given it a four or four and a half but because of the quality of the audio and the ambient sounds and the way the story is just narrated in general I really liked the format that I read it in so that's why I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars and it was very suspenseful. I kind of saw the trajectory of where things might go but I didn't predict what actually happened and that's what I really liked about it. And now moving on to the books that I read in May and June. So the first one is Sabriel by Garth Nix and this is a young adult fantasy series and the first book follows our main character Sabriel and she's actually a necromancer and it follows her as she goes into the old kingdom and is in search of her father who she presumes dead but is not quite sure and she goes into the realm of the dead to go and find him and along the way she kind of picks up a couple of companions as she's traveling and the beginning of the book took me a little bit to get into just because Sabriel was on her own but once the companions joined along with her journey I found it a little bit easier to get on board with. I think the thing that distanced me from this book was the style that it was written in because I found it really hard to connect with our main character Sabriel even though I really wanted to. I'm not quite sure what perspective this is written in. I think it's a kind of third person but the third person it was written in it kind of told us what was happening to the characters and removed an aspect of how I would usually connect with them. So I don't know if I explained that exactly right but there were though a few key elements in this that I did really like and I'm not quite sure at this stage whether I want to continue it or not. It does have a lot of fans and a lot of people behind this series so I'm thinking maybe eventually I will but it's not going to be any kind of priority for me. The magic system was really interesting. I really loved how the closer you got to the old kingdom and the more involved you got in it the more present magic became and then the further away you got so the closer to Sabriel's boarding school that you got the less magic existed and the more technology existed and worked. So I really liked that just 
juxtaposition of technology versus magic. And that's something that I found really interesting, especially more towards the end when it came into play a little bit more. But as for the story, it felt like it was mostly setting up what was going to happen throughout the rest of the series with the big bad guy and say Rule's relationship with this. So because it kind of fell into that archetype of setting things up, I couldn't quite get on board with everything that was happening. The plot at the beginning was a little bit slow and the pace was a little bit slower, but I think that's because it was laying everything down so that we could then adventure into the story. So I don't know, I gave this a three out of five stars. I might continue it, but I probably won't anytime soon. So. I'm really upset because I wanted to love this book and I thought I would adore it based on some friends recommendations but unfortunately it was only a three stars. I did like it and I don't know what else to say really. Now next up I listened to an audiobook for The Night Circus and I actually gave this one a three out of five stars as well and I feel like it was for similar reasons that I gave Sayreel three out of five stars. So this one is an adult fantasy book and I thought it would have more emphasis on the fantasy aspect of it but we basically follow a traveling circus and two main characters exist in this story so it's kind of a multiple perspective novel as well. I didn't really know much going into this story but the way I'd kind of absorbed information about it was that it was a contest set up between two magic users and that's what really piqued my interest but that's not really what it turned out to be. It was more focused on a character's relationships and the romance aspect of the story as well as loving the circus and the life within the circus and the characters who make up the circus and it didn't really have too much of a focus on the magic aspect unfortunately. It did come into play and it was talked about but it was a very underlying magic system as opposed to one that we could pick apart and understand with certain rules and I feel like I'm very much a hard magic system person in terms of I love having rules to the magic system so that I understand exactly what's going on and when those rules get subverted that's when I really get surprised. While this magic system wasn't too hard to understand everything kind of just happened without too much of a reason as to why and that's why I really struggled to enjoy it as much because the characters also weren't as likable as I wanted and so when things happened it just seemed to be happening for a particular plot reason rather than for any overall purpose and I'm just not really on board with that kind of narration style so unfortunately I only gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars and I thought this would be a 5 out of 5 star book so I'm a bit disappointed about this one but now I've read it and I can give it to someone else and it's not on my TBR anymore. So I guess that's the silver lining. The next book I listened to was another audiobook and it's Mythos by Stephen Fry. And Stephen Fry actually narrates this audiobook as well, which was a really rich listening experience for me because he does all of the voices really, really well. And because he'd also written it, I feel like he had more of a connection to it. He went back and he researched all of the Greek gods for this book and then he went and he retold all of their stories in a digestible format, which I really like. I'm a big fan of Greek mythology in general and I love the Percy Jackson series because of this and so the way he retold these was definitely very much in an adult format so he really delved into the betrayal and the violence of the stories as well which we don't really see in the Percy Jackson series because obviously it's a series for kids um, not that there aren't any battles in that series but this is very much more linked to the gods and their family aspects and the way people fight within this it also links to the creation of certain gods as well and I really liked seeing the origin stories of these I'm glad that I listened to it all in one go but I wish I'd gone back and revisited it in chunks as well because I liked that you could break it up into pieces and listen to each god story but I also liked that I could just smash it out and listen to all of it at once. I did really like Stephen Fry's narration style like I said and he's really great at the cadence of his voice and making it seem realistic to me. At the same time I ended up getting used to listening to his voice and it was a very relaxing experience so I tuned in and out of the stories depending on what he was talking about because I'm more interested in certain gods than I am in others so for that reason I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. I wish that I could give it a five out of five stars but I think I'm in a little bit of a reading slump so I'm not enjoying books to the fullest extent that I possibly can at the moment so I might pick up his next book eventually also an audiobook because I feel like he would narrate the sequel as well so I did really enjoy this one and I would recommend it if you're into Greek mythology like I am. So after Mythos I ended up listening to another audiobook and I'm upset that I didn't read many physical books during May and June because I was just so strapped for time but the next audiobook that I listened to was Tower Lord by Anthony Ryan and I actually DNF'd this about 21% through it and unfortunately I didn't really love this one as much as I enjoyed Blood Song because I did give the first book a 4 out of 5 stars but unfortunately I just could not get into this one at all. The first book was just about Valen and that's why I really liked Blood Song but then we continued on into this book and it was actually a multiple perspective book and usually I'm into that but because I was listening to it on audiobook and I feel like if I was reading it physically 
regardless. The voices of the characters all sounded pretty much the same and I'm used to hearing this narrator talk as Valen so when I was listening to this book and it jumped back and forth between perspectives and places and it didn't really set up the character or the place before diving in. I got a bit confused and I just disengaged because of that and I wasn't particularly interested in the other characters because I just wanted to hear about Valen's story because we got the whole first book on him. So unfortunately, like I said, I did DNF this which means did not finish. I'm just putting it down and not picking it back up again. I'm going to ditch this series because I don't think I will enjoy it that much but he does have another series called Waking Fire and I'm going to continue that one because I want to see his further work but unfortunately I just couldn't get on board with this after reading and liking Bloodsong and then being kind of let down in this book. It's definitely up to my personal taste and it's not really a criticism on the book itself because I feel like other people would really enjoy this series and I've seen people really liking this series but I just couldn't jump onto the bandwagon of multiple perspective after just hearing about Balin's story in the first one so this is a DNF for me at 21%. So next up I listened to two more audiobooks and these actually kind of saved me from the reading slump that I was falling into. So these are The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky and both of these are by N.K. Jemisin and they're the second and third book in her Broken Earth series. I feel like I have talked about the fifth season non-stop and these are the sequels to it so I won't go into too much detail about these because obviously spoilers as well. But I love the main character in this series. I love how these are an exploration on family and grief as well as survival and this is set in a dystopian fantasy world if you didn't already know and I really love the relationship with the magic systems in this and the earth itself I find it very intriguing and oh I can't say too much else because it's huge spoiler territory but just know that I really love these books I gave both of them five out of five stars the obelisk gate is more of a five star book for me and the stone sky just scraped into five stars so the second book by far was definitely my favorite it, even though I do have a special place in my heart for the first book. So I would highly encourage you to pick up this series. They were absolutely amazing and I just love them so much and the fifth season is probably going to be one of my favorites in my favorites video that I end up making at the end of the year. So it is definitely worth picking up this series and eventually I'm going to reread them just because I love them so much. So both five out of five stars for me and goodbye to my reading slump. Now also to get rid of my reading slump as well as listening to the five star audiobooks that I just finished, I actually read a contemporary YA book and that is fairly unusual for me but I really like this author so I read Meat Market by Juno Dawson and I really loved Clean by this author as well. I did give Clean a 5 out of 5 stars mostly because I think I liked Lexi more as a main character than I did Jana but I really love this book regardless and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Jana Novak and she gets scouted while she's out with her friends by a modeling agency and then she goes off to the modeling agency at about 16 or 17 years old. It kind of explores her journey from wanting to do the modeling because she comes from a fairly poor family and so the money that she gets from modeling will help her family but she also runs into a bit of trouble when it comes to identity and friendship and this does deal a little bit with eating disorders but they're not really the focus and also sexual assault is in this story as well so eating disorders aren't really a main focus they're just mentioned but sexual assault is mentioned a fair bit so if you are concerned with that kind of material then don't read Meat Market but I really liked the way it explored it it was really realistic and it was really true to Jana's character it didn't make things easy but it also made her friendship stronger and I really really admire the fact that in general Jana was so resilient and also so vulnerable at the same time and I think that's one of the things that Juno Dawson does really well because it was done particularly well with Lexi in Clean too. The characters are so raw and relatable and even though I couldn't empathize with the particular situations this character is in I really loved connecting with her voice and seeing how she tackled the things that went on in this story so I really liked Jana, I really liked the relationships that she had especially with her mother and her parents and her family. They were actually really positive relationships and that's what I feel like I miss a lot in YA. The parents often aren't particularly present and just let their kids do whatever but Jana was actually held fairly accountable by her parents and she had to report back to them and she just had to have this ongoing relationship with them which I really liked as well. So this one was a four out of five stars. I liked it a lot and I would recommend this one and Clean by Juno Dawson as well. 
So that brings us to the end of the books that I have finished reading, but I just wanted to talk about the two that I'm currently reading. So I'm listening to the audiobook of Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie, and I'm about, oh, I want to say I'm about 30% through it, maybe a bit less. I really love the politics and the dark undertones that come through with Glockter's character. I really, really enjoy how unique his perspective is and how smart he is as well. And I also really like that the characters that we saw in the first book, some of them have come together in a group, and I like seeing the dynamic that creates. And I find it very amusing and also very interesting and I really can't wait to see that explored and hopefully because we saw it in the first book at the very beginning a bit of action scene I hope more action happens in this book but I'll definitely keep you posted in any reading vlogs I potentially make or in my next wrap up so before they are hanged I'm really liking it and I gave the first book a four out of five stars I'm also actually reading a physical book so I'm reading Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff and I'm more than halfway through this one now and I'm really liking it it's a young adult sci-fi told from multiple perspectives and they find this girl named Aurora and she's kind of a girl out of time and I won't talk too much about why and what happens but I'll save that for a wrap up later down the track but again I'm really liking this one and I'm so glad that I finally jumped into reading a physical book because I've really missed reading physically lately so I'm liking this one a lot and I can't wait to talk about it more later on. So all of these books, not really Tower Lord plus audiobooks, are what I have read in the months of May and June. Thank you so much for watching this reading wrap up. If you have any reading recommendations for me, please let me know in the comments. I'm always keen to find new reads that you guys really like. But thank you so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.